men that have known you that are bastarded, we pray, Lord, you will revisit us in the name of Jesus. As men that have known you and they are still standing, I pray, Lord, again and again you will visit us in the name of Jesus. At the end of this conference, let there be no one in this church that will be a candidate of hell in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, let there be no one in this church that will be a candidate of hell in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm sorry when I was announcing the first thing. I only put the youth at the back. I forgot it's the youth and the children and the teenager that you are running off for us. So youth, you have space. So it's the three of you. We want everybody to be involved. We're going to get the children that will also lead us. So and also the teenagers that will lead us and our youth also will lead us. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Just do your best to be part of it. Um, this fasting. We are talking today. This is our month of new creation. It's still we continue new creation. And I think maybe we should have even changed it to our season of new creation. So uh, today I'm talking about a new, a new art for a new created man. A new art for a new created man. A new heart. For a new created man. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Um, let, me, let, me, let me read a little bit from verse 21. Ezekiel 36 from verse 21. Media. Uh, okay, maybe this one is not showing. If you let me read it from my portion here. But I had pity for my holy name, and I want you to please follow. Which the house of Israel had profaned among the hidden, whither they went. I want to repeat that. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the hidden, whither they went. I'm reading that again and I'm putting our name there as the meaning hope of glory. Because this is our season. God said, but I have pity for my holy name with the house of the meaning hope of glory are proving among the hidden whither they went. Give me that verse in another version. And I want you to note it. This is our season and this is the word of God. I suffer much pain over my holy reputation. Which the people of Israel blackened in every country where they entered. One more, one more version. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> if I have to read this one, they have to read French and Spanish and everything for us. But that's, you know, that, that, that's a very powerful one. Now, it says, but I had concern. I had concern for my holy name with the house of Domino for glory that proven among the nations where they went. I wanted to see that the first thing, when, why God wants to give us a new heart is because God is concerned. God said, I had concern for my holy name and it's for his name. It's not just for the church. It's for his name that God is having concern that some people, they are profane. Wherever they have gone to, wherever they have gone to, we have went. We have made that name of no effect. We have polluted that name. And God said, I want to give you a new heart. So let me read now up to verse 26. Now you can give me verse 22 now. But in your Bible, please note that. Therefore, said the Lord unto the house of dominion of glory. Thus said the Lord, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my only name's sake. So what God is doing is not just because he's pastor or because he's you or because of minister or because of somebody. But God is doing it just because of his only name. So that he can defend his name. But my holy name say, which you are proven among the hidden, whither you went. Verse 23. And I will sanctify my great name, 
which was profane among the heathen, which you are profane in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, said the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Hold on unto this, and I pray that we allow God to do this. He said, the hidden we see, they will know. The hidden mean the Gentiles. The hidden mean the unbelievers. The hidden mean that the people that do not know God. People that have not believed in God. But God is saying, those people that have not believed in God, we have joined them. We have come into their midst. The way they are turning lies, we are turning lies like them. The way they are committing evil, we are committing evil like them. And God is saying we are proving his name among them. The way they are defrauding people. Some of us are defrauding people also like them. You know, the way they are doing wickedness. Some of us are also doing wickedness like that. The way they are living in bitterness. Some of us also, we are living in bitterness. So when they share their bitterness with us, they share their own forgiveness and say, I will never forgive that man. You also say, well, the same thing with my own. It's only because of sure that it's all, you know, we are just doing face face. I will never forgive him. They will say, well, they are telling you and say, well, I'm just counting days for that woman. She's a useless one. She's not responsible. She is it. I just say, ah, it's the same thing, no? It's the same thing, no? Hey, I'm also just managing that woman in my house. So she's just like this. She's just like this. You are now profaning the name of God in their midst. They don't know God. You that you know God, you are, will look like the same. But God is saying, if you give me a chance, I will sanctify you before their eyes. I will glorify you if you allow God to give you a new heart. And that's what God wants to do. And I pray that we're going to allow God in the name of Jesus. Verse 24. For I will take you from among the hidden and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. God will bring you to your own place. In the name of Jesus. All the wicked men that surround you, God will separate you from them. In the mighty name of Jesus. God said, We gather you. Whatever that you have lost that have been lost around, whatever opportunity, whatever thing. Relationship that have been lost that is making you not to believe in God again. God will bring restoration unto you. In the name of Jesus. God will restore you back into your home place. In the name of Jesus. Verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean. From all your feediness. And from all your hiders will I cleanse you. So if you have been joined together with idols, idol means that you are considered something, a person, an institution, you are considered it more important, rated it higher than God. And that could be your, you yourself. That could be your job. That could be anything. It could be your family. That you have rated higher. It could be one thing that somebody has given unto you. And you are tying around your chest now. Even though we are praying, but you know that this thing is from this Baba or from this man. And you have rated them above God. Now that has become a idol. Something that you cannot do without. God said, and I will cleanse you from all your witness, from all your idols, and I will cleanse you. Then first 26 and 27 and 28 and um, I think we stop at 28. Then, no, 26. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Amen. Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my status. Cause you to walk in my status. And you shall keep my judgment. And you will do them. God said, I will cause you to walk in my status. And you will walk, you will keep my judgment. And you will do them. What many of us have been working on, what many of us have been following, we only know the laws. And law is just one. 
It's just one of the aspects. It's just, it's just the pronounced one of the ways of God to guide us in the ways of God. We don't bother to keep the status. We don't bother to keep the judgment. But God said, I will cause you to walk in my status and you shall keep my judgment and you will do them. You will begin to do what is just. You begin to do so. When God is said he will give us a new heart, he will put his spirit in us, within us, and we allow us, we empower us to be able to keep his status. To keep all those things that God has said, these are my status. These are my status three duty. These are things that you need to follow. And to do justice, to do justice, to become just with men, become just with friends, do things that can be justified. Do things that you can, you can account for. That is what God is saying, that when God put his spirit in us, he will allow us to keep it. You are not just doing it occasionally. You will keep it. The grace to keep it. Grace to do the right thing. God will release unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 28. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and be I will be your God. And we will dwell in that land that God has given to our father. And that land God has given is the land of Christianity. That is what God has given to our fathers that make us be talking about Christianity today. That is the land, that is the path that they follow. That is the path that they follow. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 6, he said that you will come to that crossroad and you will ask, no, where is the old path? And you will walk in the old path. That is the path the land that God has given, the path of righteousness, the path of holiness, the path of purity, that's the path that we will walk. And we will not just walk, we will dwell. And God will be our God. Because that is the only path that God can be identified with us. So why do we need a new heart? Why do we need a new heart? Again, in addition to that, because our whole heart, like I said, is unclean. And that's why God said in that Ezekiel 36, verse 25, I will sprinkle and will clean your heart from all your uncleanness, from all your vidiness. Our whole heart is unclean. A new heart will give you ability to see God. That's why you need a new heart. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. These are the Characteristics of a new heart. A new heart is a pure heart. It's not an unclean heart. And Matthew 5 a said that blessed are those that are pure in heart for they shall see God. So a new heart will give you ability to see God. Not just see God in heaven but see God here in our heart. We allow God to be able to reveal himself unto you when you have a new heart. Now, what other benefit? Why again do you need a new heart? A new heart will also give you access unto God. A new heart will give you access to God. Psalm 24, verse 1, verse 3 and 4. And I think we should read this also in Psalm 15, verse 1. Verse 1 said, The heart is the Lord, verse 2 and 3. For he had founded you upon the sea and established upon the floors. Yes, verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Fast four. He that had a clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. This is what a clean heart, a new heart we give unto you. We make your heart to be pure. A pure heart means it's not just clean. Pure mean there is no substitute. That is its original. When you ask and you say, I need a pure water. That means if somebody added milk to the pure water, milk added vitamins or added nourishment to it, but it's no longer pure water. It's no longer pure. 
So that means when you say you have pure heart, God is the only one. God is the central and is all. You don't have God as number one, then you have something else as number two. That's not a pure heart. When you say you have pure heart, he means that you want to all that we can see in your life is the will of God, is the will of God, is what God desires. There is no contamination. That's what we are saying. And God said, who shall ascend to that heat? A new heart, a pure heart will give you access to God. There will no contamination. Many things that have contaminated our heart, there will be no contamination. Contamination like unforgiveness. It's no longer going to be in your heart because you want to approach God. And that's why you need a new heart so that all the unforgiveness can move aside. All the hunger, all the bitterness as you are sitting down so that all the bitterness can move away. Don't forget I said a new heart, a clean heart will give you ability to see God. And so that's what God wants you to do. To, to, to God, that's what God wants to do. That's the assets God wants to give to us. That's the opportunity. But when there's anger, when there's unforgiveness, when there is malice in your heart, you will not be able to see God. When there's impurity in your heart, when there's uncleanness in your heart, there is no way you can see God. There is no way you can establish that you are a new created man. And so we need a new heart so that God can see us freely. And the Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, the heart of man is desperately wicked. So that's another reason why we need a new heart. Because the heart of man is desperately wicked. Our heart, and I think that verse said, who can know it? Who? Nobody can really know it. The heart is desperately wicked. And so if you, hold, if, you keep, if you hold on to this old heart, you, cannot, you yourself cannot imagine what you can do. Because the heart is desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. Nobody can really know it. Nobody can understand. If the heart is open, that you can read it like a book. Probably some of us this morning, we may not be able to stand inside this church if God should open our heart to see the kind of lion that is there. We just run away. But God did not want anybody to run away. God knows that the heart is wicked. He knows that wickedness that is in your heart that you are angry about. That you, God knows and that's why God wants to give you a new heart. You want to do it but you cannot do it. God knows that heart that is planning even and even continuously. God knows that that heart is wicked. And it's not that it's wicked. It is desperately wicked. I think the media can give me in um, maybe in the message version or another version so that we can just see that. He said, the heart is deceitful above all. Okay. The heart is hopelessly dark and deceitful. A puzzle that no one can figure out. I think there's a version that says the heart is sick. Oh, okay. Yeah, this version. The heart is deceitful above all things, and it is extremely sick. Who can understand it fully and know its world? What are the secret motives in your heart, in your life? What are the secret motives? What are the secret imaginations? Something you already imagine now, secretly. Even your husband, you are sitting, sleeping together on the bed, they don't know about it. Your friend that thinks that he knows everything about you know that there's, he didn't know there's something, secret motives. The reason why you are in that relationship. They didn't know but it's a secret motives. Maybe because you just want to dupe that person or you just want to get what it belongs to him. That's not the reason why you are there. And God knows that secret motives. That's why you need a new art. Those are the secret motives that God was saying in, in Ezekiel. That we have defied the house. We have profaned the place because of all the evil imaginations that we allow to come up in our hearts. We give room to that evil imagination and it grows and it grows and it grows. Probably you have allowed it to grow now to what you can undo. God wants to give you a new heart. And I want you to know that this message I'm preaching today, I know some people are watching online, but this message is not actually 
majorly for people that will be watching us later or that will be watching. It's not primarily. It's primarily for God to come back into this place. It's primarily for God to give us a new heart for us as members of Domino of glory. Maybe by extension to bless the body of Christ. But God wants to honor his, his name in our midst. And I pray that we we'll give him a chance in the mighty name of Jesus. So let me stop at this point today as we present ourselves to God. God, give me a new heart. If there's any area that the old man, old heart is still operating, the old heart that is desperately wicked, that have secret motives, secret intention, on God the motive, Lord, deliver my heart from it. Can you just go ahead and pray? Look at the motives in your heart. Look at the motive why you are in that relationship. Is it because it's good? Even some of you may have that secret motive reason why you joined the church. Is it because you just want to get something from somebody? Several years ago, I like have a brother that joined the church and because he wanted to catch one of our young sisters and he waited in the church, come for some years, follow us to retreat until he married this sister. And he already had that motive that when I get this sister, I will stop her from becoming a Christian. And that was the agenda he followed. He had that secret motives. Probably you are here today. God knows. Allow God to come back and, forgi and to forgive you. Allow God to come back and say, God, I will serve you with all my heart. God sees our heart. Maybe your heart is sick today. Let God heal it. Let God give a new heart so that God can give you a new garment and new name so that God can redeem us. All the promises of God can come to pass. Rally bo santo librale, le que te balubra se polibra se te, le que te magu libra. Lord, we come under the platform of your mercy. Lord, this morning, let your mercy prevail over every judgment that will be hanging upon anyone in the name of Jesus. If you are here, this is a month, season of new creation. Maybe you have not given your life to Christ, or you know that you are bastarded. You know yourself that your heart has gone back. You know. The things that that, 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 that that grip your heart, the fear of God is no longer in your heart. Can you lift up your hand, your right hand up, wherever you are sitting? Maybe you are in the overflow or you are upstairs. Just lift, you know that your heart is far away now. And you want God to give you a new heart. Over a situation, you know that your heart is not right on that situation. And you are saying, God, I need a new heart today. Lift your hand and I will pray for you. And if you are here, you, you, you have not even given your life to Christ. Devil is the one that has been operating your life or you are bastardly dead. Just leave those hands and I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray God to renew our hearts. Renew the right spirit within us. Somebody in the choir can help me sing that song. You can reduce, the, um, reduce that because of the people upstairs. Yes, thank you. You are, you, are, you, are the, you are in the spirit. Just sing it solemnly as we pray. Um, all of us can sing that song solemnly together. Thy salvation and in the right spirit within You may be serving wherever you are, but you know that the heart is wrong. The motives is wrong. The heart is wrong. There are still some things that are hidden in that heart. The reason why you are hidden something physically is because your heart is already, is already polluted one way or the other. And that's why you are hidden those things. You are hidden them from your wives. You are hidden them from your husband. You are hidden them from your parents. You are even hidden them from your pastors. The reason is because your heart is already polluted. Now you need a new heart today. Let's pray, Lord, create a new heart from your presence, oh Lord. Take not your spirit from me. Restore unto me. Let God break all the hardening heart, all the stony heart. They have been begging you, appealing to you, appealing to you. Your heart is still adding. Say, God, give me that new heart. I want to really do, but I do not know how to do it. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. 
I pray, Father, for as many that lift their hands up, as many that desire a new heart, a new spirit, according to your word, let there be a new heart for us in the name of Jesus. Take away every stony heart. Take away every adding heart. Take away every rocky heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Every heart that deceitfulness of sin, deceitfulness of the pleasures of this heart have taken away all the losery of this world have stolen away in our heart from you. Lord, restore back a new heart unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Lord, I give you praise. All of us, Lord, let there be no wicked heart be found in us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let our heart be right. Every heart of wives that is not right with their husband, change them. Every heart of husband that is not right with his wife, change them. In the name of Jesus. Every heart of fathers, heart of mothers that is not right with children, heart of children that is not right with the fathers, Lord, change us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let a new heart be given today in the mighty name of Jesus. All the evil that have ravaged, that have taken over our heart, Lord, pack them out in the name of Jesus Christ. By your fire, send out every strangers that have occupied our heart in the name of Jesus. Restore our heart unto yourself. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Minister Kotola. Amen. Can we please appreciate God?